<laughs> Good evening, all you poultry keepers out there. We're delighted you joined us tonight. Uh, we've got a really good show for you. Um, and we're calling this a PK360 selection tool uh, to help you identify the birds in your flock you may want to look at consideration as keepers. Now, I'll, I'll get into that later, but what brought this idea all about is over the years, I have seen people and I have been asked by people, what kind of data should I be collecting on the birds in my flock? Or what kind of form should I be using? And it's something I wrestled with for a long time and finally had a, an idea that I thought might work. Uh, bounced it off Karen. She thought it was workable. So um, this was something that Karen and I dedicated a good portion of our um, time while I was up in North Carolina to. We, we worked through the, the uh, spreadsheet and the uh, accompanying user's guide um, to come up with this finished product. Now, if you want to grab a copy of it to go along as we talk, it has just been uploaded to the Poultry Keepers 360 group file section. You want to make sure you get both the spreadsheet as well as the uh, user's guide, and you can follow right along with us. So what is this selection tool thing anyway? And it's really nothing more than a spreadsheet where you can keep different sets of data on your birds in your flock. Now, it's not going to take the place of a good hands-on evaluation of your birds. It was not intended to do that. Just a place to store your data. And it should be driven by your goals. So with that said, as we go through there, I, there are things that we may have listed as uh, data you might want to track that aren't important to you. And that's fine. Um, change it just change the heading to something else for example um, if you're not interested in knowing uh, how old a female was when she first started laying but you are interested in uh, head shape or head width just change the heading to that particular uh, topic and just customize it and make it appropriate to your particular situation um, this tool can also change and evolve over time. It's, it's not designed to be a hard and fast thing because um, as you progress with your flock and you continue to make improvements, you're going to find things that were a priority for you to, to improve or, or to change about your birds that you've succeeded in and now you're working on something else. So be sure and take that into mind as well. We have um, some recommended uh, data collection points, and I'm going to pop some of those up right now, and we'll take a look at them, go through a little presentation here. Um, this is sort of the heading of our spreadsheet, bird selection criteria spreadsheet. And we've broken it down into broad categories like bird identification. Uh, you're going to want to be able to identify or put down the hatch date of a particular bird, what breed it was, because I know some of you are working with multiple breeds, what the variety is, uh, maybe it's color, maybe it's comb, whatever. Uh, those things are going to be important to you. The sex of the bird, uh, band number, and that will be the permanent ID band number of that bird. We also have a category for sire's band number and dam's band number. So you know who the parents are. You can come back to this spreadsheet. If you're looking at a particular bird, you can go back to these two categories and you can figure out who the, the parents are very, very quickly. And as we move across the spreadsheet, we get into body conformation and color scores, uh, body capacity. Uh, here again, it's important particularly if you're working with birds for production, that you know that they have good body capacity. Body fleshing. Um, if you're working with birds and you're, try you're trying to improve uh, meat production qualities, 
body, the amount of body fleshing is going to be important to you. Balance of the bird. In other words, when you look at a bird in a sideways view, you're going to want this bird to look uh, balanced equally. You know, is one section out of balance to the other. Is the tail bigger than the body? And I've seen some birds that are like that. The overall type of the bird, in other words, how well does it conform to uh, the type description and the standard of perfection? Uh, that's important because each bird or each breed has their own individual body type. Color, how well does it match the st standard description for color? Feather quality. Feather quality is really important, I think, more so than some people initially give it credit for because that's what helps keeps the birds warm in winter um, as well as uh, keeps them dry. So you want really good feather quality. Uh, you, in general, you want a, a feather that's kind of broad, that they overlap well, has some substance to it. Now, some varieties, and, and uh, self blue is one of them, or some folks know it as lavender, has for some reason, that color is linked very closely with shredded feathers, particularly on their back and, and the base of the tail area. So there is a feather quality issue uh, with some colors that you're going to have to overcome. So it's good to make note of that. Health scores. Are they vigorous? Have they ever been sick in the past? You're going to make note of that here. And production scores, we, we have weighted this. I shouldn't say weighted, but we have included a lot of production uh, data here because, you know, it's pretty obvious in, in talking with you and, and seeing your post and, and listening to you. Many, many, many of you are working to improve the production of your birds. So that's one of the reasons we put that in here you know how many weeks does it <clears throat> does it take a bird to reach market weight what's the rating a uh, feather rate feathering weight rate I can't even talk tonight <laughs> is it fast is it medium is it slow this is where you can track that the shell shape if you're breeding for egg production you want eggs that have a good shape to their shell shell texture is it smooth or is it rough out of shape shell color shell color is uh, important to some folks um, and I'm going to I'm going to use my bronze here as an example <coughs> pardon me that um, the rating scale I'm, I'm going to be sharing with you in just a little bit um, is one through five, but Marans use a color chart that goes what they call a number four color all the way to a number nine color. So that's six points, but you can, this spreadsheet will allow you to add that additional uh, color grade in there if you want to. Uh, if you know it and you are, if you track it, first year egg production is another really important thing uh, for you to know if you're working on egg production. How old are they when they first molted? You know, did they lay for 12 months and then decide to molt, or did they lay for six months and then decide to molt? Some of this can be determined uh, by the time of year you hatch the birds, but this can help you to determine um, whether your birds are, are going to be kind of not knowing when to molt and when they shouldn't and shouldn't molt. Um, first year body weight. And you want to make sure here that you're going by the standard of perfection and what it says for a cock or what it says for a cockerel or a hen or a pullet. You don't want to be going more than 20% over or under those specified weights. You're going to have problems with your birds if you do. Do your females tend to go broody? Some folks like birds that go broody. Some folks don't want a bird that goes broody. Here again, customize it to your own, uh, your own needs. Temperament of your birds. You know, are they, are they calm? 
get along with everybody? Uh, or do you have a male that wants to flog you every time you get within 10 yards of him? Uh, those are some of the things that you can track right there. <clears throat> Reproduction score. You want to know the fertility rate of a particular bird, hatchability rate of that bird, and do they produce good quality chicks? This is so, so important. And then finally, what this spreadsheet will do, it will take all your entries, all your scores that you've entered, and it will total them up. So theoretically, the higher the score, the better the bird. But again, don't go entirely by this. Use this as a guide. Go by your examination of the bird and what you, what you determine in that examination. Notes, we've left a, a session here for other notes about the bird. Uh, you know, did it get sick? Did it die? Did you sell it? Did you process it? Whatever you would like to put in there, that's totally up to you. Does not affect the score of the bird. And photo reference numbers. Um, this is where you, you can't really add photos to a spreadsheet. So what we're suggesting that you do is to create a file for photos in your computer and then create some sort of filing system um, where you can trace photos back to a particular bird. Maybe it's the photos of uh, the color of the egg they came from. Maybe it's them as an adult. Maybe it's them at 10 weeks or 20 weeks. Uh, whatever photos you would normally take or would like to take, you can enter those numbers here and it will tell you where to go and find those photographs in your file section. <clears throat> Sometimes I, I want to remind you of, you're still going to need to do a hands-on evaluation. I can't say that enough. Uh, no way to get around it, no ifs, ands, or buts. You're going to need to understand your breed and variety descriptions and what the standard says. You're going to need to understand the general defects and general disqualifications because that's going to be important to you. This is not designed to replace anything you've learned. Uh, it is um, sort of, I guess, a way to look at it. It's an application of what you've learned, but it's just a place where you can keep all of your data in one spot. Now, this spreadsheet was created in Excel and you, if you don't have Excel, that's all right. We tested it. It will work with Google Sheets online, which is free. Uh, it will work with uh, Open Office, which is a free software. You can download. It has a spreadsheet utility in it. It'll work with a, a lot of different software applications. So don't let, uh, just because it was created in Excel, don't let that deter you from using it. Um, Karen came up with an idea for uh, how you can weight information that is well, more important but, to you. So Karen, explain that. But, well, before we go there, did we really talk about the one through five? And not yet, but I was going. okay. Well, let's let's maybe let's talk about. Well, you can if you need right, to break, let me get to like that, you. then we'll come back to that. Yeah, I think so. Let's uh, just a, a, the user's guide has been uploaded. I think it's seven or eight pages. I'm not sure. <laughs> eight. But, <laughs> it's right but we try to keep it simple and straightforward for you here's the scoring system that we're suggesting you're not tied to this you're not wed to it you can use any number in that spreadsheet and it will still work but starting out with a number one or poor in a particular quality number two is below average number three is average number four is above average and number five is excellent. So here again, that's just what we suggest. If you want to change it, you're perfectly welcome to do that. So I feel for me, my starting point for most of my birds on most of their things is going to be a three, right? Like if it's just, it's not the best bird, it's not the worst bird, it's just sort of average for my flock. Or are you thinking like average across 
all chickens everywhere. Like, I would rate it as compared to what the standard says. Okay. For type or for color. Okay. Now, egg production numbers, that's another whole, whole bowl of wax, but that's going to be based on your flock production. And the spreadsheet will basically work as long as you assign lower numbers to things that are worse and higher numbers to things that are better. Correct. So, yeah, you can use zeros if you want, if your bird, poor bird isn't even poor. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but. I've got one more thing, and then I'm going to bounce it back to Karen. Um, here's an example of directions on body capacity score. Evaluate your birds to determine their body capacity. Enter a number from one low to five high to indicate their body capacity score. Remember, birds with larger body capacities are typical you better producers. If you're unsure of how to evaluate a bird's body capacity, visit our YouTube channel and watch a video on the subject, and you can click on that link, and it'll take you directly to uh, that particular video that we're referencing here. And we have graphics, lots of graphics in the user's guide, as well as other video references. So, Karen, I'm going to bounce it back to you. And you expect and me to have to something about to say? The multiplying factor. <laughs> um, so I'm going to just in doing this, you know, when you're when you're adding all those things together, um, the problem I found was that you're basically calling everything even. Um, if you if you refer, I'm just going to bring it up because it's it's here. If you get you if you add your points, and you're looking at oops, sorry. You're looking at uh, there. You're looking at vigor and shell shape. You know, if you put in that your your vigor is a three and your shell shape is a five, that bird all of a sudden has poor vigor but an excellent shell shape, and that bird has a higher score. You know, one bird would have a higher score than another. You know, based on so I'm not saying that right, but hopefully you know what I'm trying to say. Um, so for me, when I'm using this, I would take the columns that are the most important to you and just multiply the score, right? So if vigor is what you're going for, if you've got birds that are dying too often and you're losing half your chicks and you're really trying to get off of medicine and you're trying to, you know, make your vigor score out of 25. Do you know what I mean? Give that bird a vigor score of 20. You know what I mean? And leave the shell shape at five. It might be the perfect shell shape. But perhaps that's not the apps, you know, maybe vigor is in the scheme of things more importantly, and I shouldn't have used shell shape, I should have used shell color as my example, because shape, you want them to hatch, it is important. But um, so it just if you've got something that you're really working on, if you're a meat bird, and you're doing your weeks to market rate is, is way more important to you than the color of the bird, you know, just decide what your columns are worth, you know, how many points are they out of? Does that make sense, Rip? Is that what? Mm -hmm. um, so in some of these, and this Rip was sort of alluding to, some of these are very, are very broad. You know, we've got type here. This is the one that really got me. Type is one, is one square on this spreadsheet. But in order to get this number, you have to do so much work, right? To come up with how good this bird's type is. That's it's it's almost before you get to the spreadsheet, you are figuring out what are all the things you're looking at to get there, Rip. I mean, well, you, you're looking at, at uh, top lines, bottom lines, the head, the wing set, the tail carriage, uh, the amount of fluff on a bird, uh, the position of the legs on the body, and it, it's going to vary a little bit from breed to breed. Uh, so it's all these things that you have to keep in mind uh, when you're evaluating type and you goes back to what I said you're going to need a really good understanding of uh, what the standard prescribes for that individual breed or color variety and well so the type wouldn't change for color variety sorry yeah. Well, and all, and so basically in order to get your answers, some of the questions are very straightforward. You know what I mean? That how old were they when they first laid an egg? You know, 
basically, now, when you look at the instructions, you'll actually find for that actual one, age at first egg, you're still assigning that one through five, meaning that it was a poor age, it was an average age, it was an excellent age. So if you actually enter the actual number age, if you put in there 26 weeks, that bird will get a 30, a bird who starts laying at 36 is going to get a higher score than a bird who starts learning at 26. So make sure that the times where you're actually entering in actual data, that higher is better. And in that case, for most people, higher is not better. Um, and it'll say that in the user's guide, but just in case you're not, in case you're like 90% of the American population and you just want to start using it without looking at instructions, then <laughs> just remember and ask yourself, ask yourself is, is, is a higher answer that's it's going to give them more credit and is that what i'm meaning to do so all right i'll be quiet now nobody has any questions rip you're going to just have to dive in well and um i've, I've got some more things to hit here but okay. one of the things that i tried to approach this from was um what do i wish I had um, known when I first started, you know, I wish I had known that it was important to look at all these encompassing factors uh, if I'm going to breed a better bird. Uh, because it, it's a lot to digest when you're first getting started and you're unsure of yourself, which is perfectly normal, but it's so important that, it, it will ultimately help you become a better breeder faster uh, if you start looking at data points, tracking those data points, and evaluating your birds. And speaking of evaluating your birds, um, when you're evaluating birds, be sure that you're doing it consistently from bird to bird the same way. Um, and, you know, be honest with yourself. Sometimes it's I know it's, it's hard for me to look at a bird and say, I bred that bird and that bird sucks. You know, and it's not something I, I care to admit to I, sometimes. I get to say that all the time. <laughs> <laughs> but just be honest uh, in your evaluations. And uh, particularly over time, make sure you're evaluating birds the same way um, for your bird's sake. You know, uh, you don't want to throw out a, a otherwise good bird. Uh, because you, you kind of glossed over a particular point during your evaluation. You certainly don't want to do that. Um, but Rip, the spreadsheet, I mean, working through the spreadsheet is going to help a lot of people be way more objective about scoring their birds. Yeah, I hope so. Right, so it's going to take away, it's going to relieve some of that, oh, she's my favorite chicken kind of thing, right? when they start actually putting their hands on them and judging them and filling in the squares, I think a lot of light bulbs are going to come on in people's minds. Like, wow, you know, why, why have I been keeping this line of birds or, you know, it, it, it's perpetuating. Um, I, to me, it's a huge tool. It's, but it's more scientific and you're going to make educated decisions on who you're keeping and, and what progeny you're going to be working with moving forward. And it's going to make everybody a better breeder, in my opinion. Well, I certainly hope so. And that's, that was the goal that Karen and mine were working from when, when we got our heads together and, and first started uh, seeing what we could come up with again. And could we keep it simple and not overly complicated? <laughs> <laughs> Don't take your head, Karen. No, nope, uh -oh. we cannot. Yeah. No, nope. <laughs> not with Karen involved. There ain't no way you're not going to overcomplicate this. <laughs> he said no a very lot. Y'all would be very proud of him. Yeah. <laughs> and let's see. Benita says, uh, "I'm old school. I write the headings in a notebook and take it to the barn." You know, the bottom line, folks. If that's what works for you, do it. Just so you're doing it consistently. Because yeah. once you get in the habit of uh, evaluating your birds consistently, making notes of it, your birds are going to get better over time. That's that's the key. The whole idea was 
people are so in tune to the digital age that that's one of the reasons we decided to go the spreadsheet route. You know, I worked off a note, <laughs> notebook myself for many, many years and uh, probably still would if I hadn't met Karen and she drilled into me the value of spreadsheet. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> Morgan's helping us out here. So you can set up 24 to 30 weeks as a one, 31 to 36 is a two for the age they start laying um, to give a specific score. So that's exactly right. And yes. And uh, um, let me, I'm just going to stop this for a second just because I'm just, I'm just going to pull up the user guide for, for a minute. Okay. Um, I think might be pulling up something else in which case I apologize um, but that is that's basically what we tried to do so we actually do talk about he, he brought up that body capacity score um, so there's our suggestions for score and that's all they are suggestions a starting point something honestly I find a lot if you tell people this is how the score should work they're like uh oh -uh, that is not but it helps it helps give them something to say no against to like get their mind focused. So um, that's sort of was the idea. So there's balance, some examples there. Type, that's the one that is a huge score to get there. Color, feller quality, health, vigor, disease resistance. So, you know, we put in there what we thought our scores might be for disease resistance. Um, there's our time to market weight. There we go, age at first egg. So, oh, we were, we were less generous than uh, Morgan. So we had <laughs> 24 <laughs> weeks as a one and 23 weeks as a two, 22 as a three, 24, 21. And, and, 20, and 20 Karen, weeks as a one, five. That's, yep. that's one thing that's going to change from breed to breed, you yep. know, because they don't all start laying at the same time. Yep. And, and that's part of the nice thing about a score. So for my birds, for my Rhode Island Reds, I'll just throw it out there. I know if I hatch them in March or before, they're going to start laying in the fall, right? They're going to start laying before winter and they will keep laying through winter. But if I hatch them in June, they are not going to start laying till January. And I feel like that's a me problem. You know what I mean? Like, I don't know that I want to ding a, I don't know that I want to ding a uh, bird that I just didn't give it a chance to start laying on time because they're what, gone and there's no light and there's, you know what I mean? They're just not coming in to lay because of the seasonality, but I could, I know when I hatch that bird, so I can still, the first birds that start hatching or start laying from that group, they can get a better score than the, uh, than other birds. Okay. I'm going on and on. Um, <laughs> so I'm going to just scroll through these cause it's fun here. Rip wants everybody to breed for only very dark brown eggs, and he <laughs> never, he never wants you to look at anything else. Just I didn't say that. I'm just I know. <laughs> um, you do. We do talk about you in the instructions a lot. We don't say it every time because we felt like you should remember. Um, is there's a lot of these things that are for females that you have to score the males on. And we were, in general, talking about using either their mother's scores or their daughter's scores, depending on which way you want to track it. You think? Yes? No? Yeah. Yes? Okay. So, if you, have a, if you have a male whose daughters start laying earlier than others, does his age at first egg score go up? I'm sorry, I, my mind was... <laughs> <laughs> I, was, I was reading some of the comments. I wasn't paying attention, teacher. I wasn't teaching. I was discussing. No, I was saying that if you have a male, so at first, okay, I'm going to take this off the screen and make you talk about something else. Um, Cause I'm mean like that. Um, <laughs> can you have a baby chick and fill this spreadsheet out all at once? Like when do you think you'll actually be able to actually complete the whole every column if you were aiming for that how many how long you're gonna have to go through a year yeah so just leave the columns blank you know what i mean like but when you're comparing if you really want your numerical score to count if you truly want to say oh i got a 138 and this bird got a 104 and this bird got a 112 then you have to be comparing all birds of the same age you can't you know what i mean you can't compare 
a bird who's hatched something and has something in the hatchability score with one who didn't, or it's just not fair. But you can still you can still look at the number. You don't only have to look at the score. That's what he was saying. You're still you're just Correct. you're recording the definition. Shall we talk about the these comments, Rip, so that you can? Yeah. Well, wait, I got a question. Oh. Oh. Go for it. The idiot needs help. So. Egg, egg shell color. Let's back up to that just for a second. Mm -hmm. Do they judge the eggshell color, Rip? I mean, does it? Uh, if you take a bird egg, to the show, does it really matter what the eggshell looks like? Uh, there are egg shows. Okay. Uh, it, it's a uh, particular shell color gets really competitive in breeds like Marans, Well Summers, uh, Americanas, uh, the ones that that lay the colored eggs. The APA also offers egg shows uh, and they they even include decorated eggs and all kinds of things. They have all kinds of categories. But yeah, they do have egg shows. It's not as popular here in the U.S. as it is over in Europe. So do you find that to actually be genetic yes. or families? Because um, uh, as a feed guy, I would tell you I can screw that up or fix it through the quality of the feed and the type of protein, et cetera. But I'm just asking, you know. I, I think there's some of both factors at play, both genetics and nutrition. Uh, I, I raised Marans for a number of years. And, um, of course, the Holy Grail is the number nine egg, which is very, very, very dark. Um, and I have only seen one over the years that was that dark. But to darken the egg colors, we had to use hens that laid a dark shelled eggs and males from females that laid a very dark shell egg. And the darker the shell, and you keep breeding those together. But particularly in Marans, and I think other brown shelled egg breeds go through this sort of thing too, uh, is that the color of the eggshell can kind it can kind of come and go, you know. They kind of start out here when they first start with a good dark egg, and then over a period of time, it just kind of tends to taper off. Uh, they go through a molt, and then it'll come back up to where it started out. and So it's kind of cyclical in nature. Heat can affect it. If it gets really hot, your egg color goes to pot. Uh, stress, if the birds get stressed out over something or freaked out, there goes your eggshell color. Um, but I, again, it's... it's I think it's not all genetic. I think there's definitely a nutritional uh, component at play there as well, Jeff. Uh, and that, you know, I'm, I've adjusted some eggshell colors over the years, you know, helping other farmers out through adding a little of this or a little of that or whatever. And so I, I knew it couldn't be 100% genetic, um, but there has to be a component that changes that pigment within the bird, you know, just like the yolk inside, right? So the amount of uh, carotenoids and xanthophils that are going into the bird directly affects, you know, what, what's in that yolk. I'd be interested to know what affects that eggshell color from a nutritional standpoint, besides genetics, you know, figure out a way to enhance that. But sorry to digress. I just- No, no, was... no, that's, that's fine. <clears throat> so what we're here to- well, when we're trying to pick columns to talk about, you know, I mean, it's it's what's going to be relevant to the most number of people that is something that actually can make a difference by tracking it. Because there's some things that you can track that. That and, you know, I think Kylie makes an excellent point here in her Marans that uh, she's got some that lay pretty dark eggs, but the bird she got from a hatchery lay several shades lighter, even though they're the same breed and variety. It doesn't necessarily transfer that just because you have black copper marons, all black copper marons are going to lay this very dark egg. It's going to be where they selected to lay dark eggs. It will vary within that variety from breeder to breeder. Um, it, it's the dark brown eggshell color is. It'll make you pull your hair out. I feel that any trait you're trying to go for and fix is going to pull your hair out. Yeah, well, that's true. <laughs> um, I 
that's interesting. I'm not sure I would have ever thought you would change the outside color of the egg. Good. With what? Oh. You mean nutritionally? Well, yeah. Yeah. I know you can yeah. change the heck out of the size of it, but <laughs> but. Yeah, I, you know, I've made a I've made a lot of you know common brown egg layers darker by adding things like alfalfa meal and kelp meal to the feed. Um, but I'm sure it's one of the micronutrients within either of those that's doing the job. I just, you know, I haven't found anybody who wants to experiment with putting a pinch of this on, on the feed on a routine basis, on a per chicken basis. You know, somebody that has a whole row of breeding pens of black copper morans that, you know, we can try a little iron, we can try a little manganese, we can try a little zinc and see which one affects that. It would be... Uh, I'm all in on trying that experiment, but um, it you know, would be fun. Yeah, Ky Kylie, I think he's do. talking to you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it seems to be the eggshell color seems to be tied to uh, hemoglobin production and uh, manufacture within the bird. So if it's hemoglobin, then we have to talk a little bit more about the iron or the zinc because those are going to be the key components of hemoglobin, but. I'm not 100% sure, and, you know, like I said, if, you know, yeah, I mean, I, you know, <clears throat> like I said, if Kylie wants to set up some sort of an experiment and we can work together on it, I can send the micronutrients to her. She can play with it. I mean, it, it's literally setting up a salt shaker of these and just putting like two shakes on the feed every day kind of thing, you know, to, to see how, how it affects her if it makes a difference. So it um, just takes time. It ain't going to be expensive. It just takes time. Laura, if you just, because people who are tuning in are people who are interested, if you tell us some of the things that you look for in your spreadsheets that we missed, I'd love to hear them. Um, you don't have to tell us what we did right because that list might be short, but tell us what we missed. <laughs> um, um, and I do want, we did forget to mention that uh, Alyssa is still with us. We just, we just missed her today. So um, she'll be back. <laughs> She's playing hooky. She she heard we were talking about spreadsheets and she said, mm, that's not really all that exciting. All right. Okay. Let's get back to the thing. So um, I want to go back and I looked up who this was at the time. It was initials, maybe TG. I forget. I admit it. Um, talked about lightly borrowing, and that is a huge. I mean, we deliberately put very little formulas and formatting in our spreadsheet so that you can change it to from one end to the other. Absolutely no, absolutely, you know, just take it and make it yours. Jeff, what do you want to tell people about what their first thing they do is when they uh, download a spreadsheet from the internet? You save it, <clears throat> you hide it. <laughs> and then you always do save as. So you you never, ever, ever, when you do the original download, you don't fill in any of the squares of that or any of the cells. You just tuck it away, right? And you do a save as, you know, so you don't lose it. So you always have it somewhere in its unadulterated state because I've screwed up thousands of spreadsheets. So I'm speaking from experience here. You know, and when you when you alter the math in a cell and then you're like, oh, what did I do? And trying to figure it out and get it back to normal. So save it and then do a save as name it something different and carry on. Have fun with it. You can even put the word backup in there in the yeah. file name so that, you know, that's not the one you're supposed to be using. That's the, that's the in case. Um, all right. Uh all right, uh, Jeff, you know who this was. You remember who said they hope to try this tool, come back and discuss the process? No? I'm oh, uh, Beverly. Okay. Yeah, Beverly was wondering if we could circle back around and talk about it later, you know. Um, That's something Karen and I were actually talking about today. Yeah. Um, and, you know, maybe this format is not the best format to do that in. Maybe it's something like a Zoom meeting where we can get some back and forth going on and we can see who's saying what and and one can feed off the other. But I, I think that would be 
not only a fun thing to do, I think it's an important thing to do. So uh, we'll give you guys a, a few months to to kind of work on some of this stuff and, and we'll set something up. And for those who would like to participate, we can certainly do that. That so would be fun. On the Facebook group, we'll, we'll, we'll put out there that we're looking to do it and give us your email address to invite you if you want to sound something like that. Mm -hmm. Or you can bump us, you know, I mean, just say, hey, you know, I'd like to have some more discussion about this after you've tried it for a month and say, you know, what do you think about this or what do we need to change or, you know, where are we going with it? Um, yeah. And, you know, I, I would be willing to, to sit down and spend some time uh, just one on one, maybe through StreamYard where we could record it and to get your feedback. You know, what did you find work well? What? made you really frustrated with this and, and want to reach out and bang on my head. Um, I, I'm, I'm open to that as well. So, you know, whatever works for you guys, we're, we're willing to, to do that. I wish I'd known banging on your head was an option while you were in town. I didn't tell you for a purpose. No, yeah. <laughs> Would have been good. Um, <clears throat> all right. So Laura got back to us with some of the things that were missing. Um, so, and, and this is where Laura and I are in agreement that type type broken down into. So, and if you look at the user guide, it actually even says you might need another spreadsheet to create the number that goes in this one cell <laughs> for type. And that's what, yeah. like for me, my, my evaluation spreadsheet of skull with back flatten and all that. But if any of this stuff is not useful for you and you want to dish it for that, or if you're like an awesome person and you just want to make the spreadsheet, uh, 14 columns wider, just throw all that stuff in there and get rid of the word type. Put all the things that would go into type in their own little columns. Um, so, yeah, we tried to design this so they could do exactly that, you know, yeah. customize it to their individual needs. Yeah. Um, I try as we might, we, we knew that we weren't going to be hitting everybody's needs and getting them all taken care of. So we tried to make it, Simple and straightforward where they could take it and, and make it their own. Plus, if you look carefully at Laura's uh, things here, skull width, back flatness, heart girth, body depth, breath flushing, and keel, we would be needing to write the standard again in order to <laughs> <laughs> tell you what they should all, like the user guide for that basically becomes an instruction manual on how to raise chickens. And while Rip is up for that, we were not up for it in a weekend. So, <laughs> he's going to do it one of these days, but, um, all right. So everybody likes the idea of a meeting. They're saying even maybe just in a month that they like, just, just starting trying to put it into action, maybe having something that prompts them that, yes, I need to do this, get started. Um, uh, that reminds me and we're going to, we'll go, go back to questions, but, um, I had this exact question when I was wanting to know something from Rip is when can I, when can I look at some of this? And I know I've asked that in other questions. I'm going to keep asking it because I feel like it's a huge question that happens all the time, but some of these are time sensitive, right? Yes. So body capacity, I'm gonna, this is, we're going to do a rip, a rip, rip, a rip, rip. I like that. Um, body hey, capacity, what is the earliest that you're really going to put body capacity down <clears throat> score? And here again, this is going to change from breed to breed to breed. Uh, and y'all probably heard me harp about Rhode Island Reds because I've bred them for so many years. But for my female Reds, I was very comfortable uh, doing this at about five to six months of age. For my male cockerels, I was not at all comfortable until they were like 10 to 11 months of age because the males tend to develop more slowly than the females. And I wanted them to have a chance to basically fully mature or I was comfortable that they were fully mature. So, you know, I'd, I'd love to say you can do this at five months, you can do this at, at six months, I'm I'm just not comfortable telling you that because I don't I don't know what you're breeding and and where you are on your poultry journey with your birds. I'm going to and I'm going to challenge you on this only because I am in the process of trying to learn to stop 
waiting till everybody's 18 months to decide who has the best body depth. <laughs> if you are comparing like birds, so if you're looking at a bunch of 10 week old birds, can you, if every, you know everybody's the same age, can you know some things like not what this bird's going to end up looking like, but can you tell that bird A is deeper or wider than bird B? I believe, generally speaking, you can. So if you want to get a jump on it, as long as you're willing to know to go back later and just find out if what you put down at eight weeks or 12 weeks comes true, at, you know, when they actually develop, you might be saving yourself time in the future if you can learn what works in your birds and what doesn't work. Because I think you will find that, you know, if you go stri strictly by weights and who gains weight the fastest, if your goal is the biggest bird and who gains weight the fastest, those don't always line up, right? Correct. Those. So you'll learn what things you think should work but don't and what things you had no idea you could see so soon because you just weren't looking. And, and I'll, I'm going to share this with the folks too, that uh, I know a lot of folks are really concerned how fast do they come into lay or how fast do they reach market weight. And when you're evaluating things like that, remember that it's often not the fastest birds to hit a certain level or achieve a certain level of production that are your better birds. And it's, cert it's certainly not the bottom of the barrel birds either. It's usually those birds that are in that middle of the road group that are going to be the birds that are, are going to be your better birds for breeding and, and that sort of thing. All right. I'm still going to put this back to you. So body fleshing, that one, they definitely need to be adults, right? You're not looking at the breast meat is some of the last meat that's, is that right, Jeff? Is that the last meat that gets put on the bird? You don't know. I don't it's know. It's the largest. It's the largest, so it's not going to finish developing until last. Only simply because it is the largest muscle group for most birds, not all, okay. but pretty much, you know, eighty-five, ninety percent or more um, of the poultry out there. The breast is the largest portion of the total muscle mass, and yes, yeah, so. It's going to be really hard to measure that, you know, and evaluate that until they're pretty close to a year old. I mean, 10, 10 plus months for most breeds. Um, just from my observation, you know, and there's some that are ahead of that and some are behind that. But yeah, um, so it's going to be really hard to do that, you know, that breast confirmation, you know, feel and see how they're how well they're rounded out for a while. So you just leave it blank, right? You're looking at a six month old bird. You leave this. I wouldn't, blank yeah, I wouldn't fill it in. in. Right. Yep. All right. Balance rip. Do you feel like that's something they have or don't have from the beginning? Well, I think you can start to see balance. Um, kind of early on, but you, you can't determine the final balance look until they have matured. It, you, it, and that's me as a judge speaking. Um, I, I would hate to make that call uh, on, on some breeds like leggerns or reds. You know, the tails can be so slow to come in um, that what they look like now, they can change drastically in two to three weeks. Okay. That's, that's valid. Type, so, same thing. So oh, go ahead. Rip, should we, you know, should we go in uh, with the help of some others and put like inspection time periods like you know, maybe you should look at this at six months old, right? And look at this at a year old and look at this at, you know, uh, so people aren't looking at things too early. Um, you know, newer breeders who are still getting into it, still getting their feet wet, you know. Good idea. And, you know, so like we just, you can't determine, you know, the fullness of breast, you know, or the confirmation of a breast at six months for most breeds. So you would skip the breast part, but you can start seeing balance. And, you know, there are a lot of things you can see at six months. And you, you want to be considering, you know, culling, you know, doing your first culling by, by that time frame, you know, just so you can cut down on your feed bill, if nothing else. All right. 
Yeah, I'm, I'm more than comfortable with doing that. Okay. So type, I think all these body confirmation things are going to be later because that's sort of just, that's a finished bird is where yes. you're really looking at. Yes. So color, you know, some people have strong opinions on chick color and that can make a difference in your what breed you're doing and that sort of thing. But, um, and feather quality is really hard when they don't have any. Um, but vigor, I mean, you, you, I think almost couldn't almost every chicken have a vigor score for their age. <laughs> like, well, I would think so. Yeah. I, yeah. I, I would hope they would because yeah. uh, every time you're inspecting them, you should reassign a vigor score. Right. You know, yeah. So even as chicks, you know, if you want to put something on them at two weeks old, what's their vigor like? Um, because yeah. that's important. Chick vigor is almost just as important as adult vigor. So knowing that, um, even if you want to, you know, make a second tab to the spreadsheet for chick evaluation, you know, um, something similar, but just, you know, evaluating the chick. All right. I'm going to put this up for Morgan. So Morgan agrees that would be great, Jeff, if we could put time frames on that. Helps us learn the birds if we have a place to rate them and keep the historical data so we know who finishes better. So that I am the queen of tabs. I never get rid of historical <laughs> data. So if you look at the tab on this spreadsheet, it says first 18 months. But Morgan, I challenge you to have your first tab be six weeks, four weeks, one week. Do you know yeah. what I mean? Like, you know, and then just you just copy and paste so that the, all the same identification data is on there. And then but you're going to have two weeks, three weeks, whatever. And you can and if you're using the score, that's the nice thing about the score column at the end. If you're using the numbers and the score, then you just sort your spreadsheet in order. So it'll put your chicks. It'll rate your chicks in order. Um, you don't have to look down to see like, oh, number 39 is better than number 32. So. Just keep just keep going over with it. You can see who was in first place to begin with, who's in first place later, who's in. So that's pretty exciting, Morgan. I got a little too excited about that. I apologize. <laughs> um, she she got all excited about spreadsheets, using spreadsheets. Oh. <laughs> yep. So disease resistant, same thing, in my opinion. If, he, if he's going to have less than a four at any point, he just needs to go now. Um, weeks to market weight. Obviously, we know when that one's. Oh, here's the one I had to ask. This is what I asked Rip about was feathering weight rate. Right. And, and I was wondering, like, am I talking about when the feathers first start coming in? Like, I mean, they're two week old and there's a huge difference in feathering between this bird and that bird. Like, is that what we're looking for? But he said no, basically. <laughs> you you want to know when they're fully feathered, okay. how fast it takes them to do that. Okay. And you mean truly, fully, fully feathered? Yes. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, so shell shape, they have to lay eggs, I'm pretty sure, to get to shell shape, color, um, egg weight, and and where you're going to determine how what their egg weight, that's going to be up to you. You know, some people need their eggs, you know, there's pullet eggs, or are they in it too long? I have a... Uh, Australorp that is still laying a pullet egg and that has disqualified her from breeding in my opinion because she kept doing that for too long so she loses all right age of molt that's pretty obvious molt duration you can't do that first your body weight pretty much have to be a year pretty tense okay temperament so there is one production score over there that we can do younger right everybody can have a temperament score from the beginning I am boring them, everybody, in case you want to know. Because they're trying to stay awake. Um, and then You're doing good. And then reproduction, they obviously need to uh, reproduce. Okay. Oh, look, this bird has a 28. He's way better than all the other birds with no score whatsoever. Um, all right. I'm gonna this is a live spreadsheet, right? I mean, you're sharing. You're yeah. Sharing that. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Do I need to? Do something. Oh. oh, you want to show the Jeff? Jeff wanted my to my only here. my only input on this spreadsheet. Okay. Oh, and she got rid of it. No. I put it back. Okay. Go ahead. Was tell us. Color was color coding the numbers. So when you type in a number on the spreadsheet, it'll automatically go to that color. So. So 
So when you get a spreadsheet and it all looks like this, you maybe don't want to keep that burn. <laughs> That's all. You know, but to me, uh, color colors kind of make a, a big statement some, for some people more than more than numbers do. So mm -hmm. they're still going to add up in the end, but I think it's going to identify areas of, you know, critical areas for you to be concerned about. All right. I'm going to be quiet for a little bit because I got too excited. So let's read some comments here. Oh, this was part of, I was trying to get to this with Carolyn. Um, is this evaluation done annually? I'm going to let somebody else answer because I was supposed to be being quiet. Geraldine, I think if I were evaluating potential breeders, I would do it annually for each bird. Because a lot can change in, t in 12 months with a bird. And so we, we need some way to, to identify that and to keep track of it. There you go. So either annually or I think we got down to weekly. <laughs> One or the other. Um, uh, Ty, Tyson, Tyler, Jensen, some, I already, sorry, I'm, I look these up when they happen and then I forget who says it. It's going to send you some shell pigment. Color. Oh, good. And, and I can't see who posted what on my comments yeah. here. Yeah. Um, Amy was wondering about, they came in, we were talking about type and should, or could it be broken down into subcategories or is that going too far? Never Not too far. No, not at all. Uh, break it down into as many as you feel necessary that you're comfortable with. You, you know your birds. You know what you're trying to, where you're trying to move them to. So you be the judge. Even you when you're, me. even when you're talking color, you know, when I was trying to breed well summers, I failed at that quickly. Um, you know, I mean, my spreadsheets were like, color had like 11 different categories because there's different colors of the on every part of that bird <laughs> mm -hmm. do you know what i mean like so it, even everything can be broken down smaller um and somebody else wants to tell us that you can you can get those excel stuff to work with your phone oh to an iphone app so that when you're out with your chickens you can submit it right there instead of waiting to get back to your laptop i agree with that just don't drop it in the water. Does that come with a free magnifying glass? So I <laughs> my you, eyes just, are bad. you just need to get a bigger phone. Just carry your iPad out there. I don't have a pocket that big. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I'm going back to the. Uh, um, so somebody agrees that they can do chick evaluations and keep that for that. And temperament. Kylie has a two-month-old two-month-old Sarama. Well, I guess when they're that small, they can be a jerk sooner. That <laughs> <laughs> um, agreed that constantly grading temperament and figure. And some people temperament is does vary very much by breed. I watched a a post on the Facebook group recently about temperament, and every single person on that said that they were okay with a bird that wasn't very nice. That surprised me a little bit, but. That's everybody gets to make their own choice. Um, color code. Oh, Jeff, here's your here's your person who likes your color coding. So, oh, more. Look at all these people think Jeff was awesome. Um, color, you know, color adds, you know, just it, it adds to life, right? It just makes it better. Okay. You know, on your temperament subject, I do want to say, mm -hmm. right? So I, I work with more than just chickens for everybody out there and you know, listening land, but every species, the, 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 the animal or the bird with like the worst temperament live the longest. So if, if longevity is in your bag of tricks, or that's something you're interested in promoting, um, you, they just don't die, right? The, the more ornery, nasty, the worse their temperament is, the longer they're going to live, right? And they are, they're, they're more resilient and, and less de, de, prone to diseases and things like that. It's amazing. 
you just can't kill the idiots. I mean, it just doesn't happen, right? They, they're going to live forever. So if they're you breed that out of your birds, you know, yeah. you may be losing something on the backside. They're, they also seem to be the most fertile, have the best fertility rates. Right. Okay. I'll they're just it. hard to put up with, right? You I don't want to tolerate them. on how much you want to tolerate. Yeah. <clears throat> um, all right. So Garoline says she wants us to get stick to the facts. That's an APA member right there. Stick to the facts. What can I take away from this? <laughs> <laughs> so add a column for periodic evaluations. I'm going to say yes, but I'm actually not quite sure how adding a column. Let's say a tab I get because you would basically be replacing, but a column. Sure. If you can figure it out, help us learn. Come back to that Zoom meeting we're going to have in a little bit and tell us how you made that work for periodics. Because um, I just feel like you're almost starting over with a blank each time. But uh, I mean, the whole tab could be, you know, your six month olds or whatever age, right? You can go down through and you can just, you know, put your bands and so on. And you, then you can copy and paste that page and move it to the next tab. Right. And then yeah. that the, the tab would then be your one year olds or whatever. Right. And you can just keep progressing it out through. <laughs> what? I, I love this comment here. The snotty aggressive birds always seem to live forever. Okay. Yep. Absolutely. <clears throat> um, well, and I definitely, I mean, right now with my spreadsheets, which do not look pretty and have no color coding, and I love the way Rip put it put the different sections in the spreadsheet that's much prettier than my just go on forever but you know what i mean like they have they keep getting scores along their along their lives you know what i mean so you've got you know their 18 week wait in the same spreadsheet as they're on the same line as their you know five-year-old wait so it does get it does get cumbersome as you keep going so different tabs would be interesting um, all right, so Naomi always numbered and color codes the breeding pens. So my quick reference for the colored zip ties, Jake's birth. That's good. I like that. Um, anybody who just says interesting. Interesting is way better than boring, so that's great. Um, are we at our hour? I forgot to look for our hour. Um, we are. Do you have any more questions or comments? There, there are a lot of people talking to each other, but I feel like they're Okay. We've, I think we've hit most of it. Um, um, Rip, how about you? You satisfied? I am satisfied. Um, we've got uh, one announcement. Well, we actually, we got two announcements. If we, uh, one, we would really like to express our thanks and appreciation to those of you who are working with this uh, with us on our waste study and and tracking the chick weights that's um, that's going to be really valuable information that that can be put to very good use and our topic for next time is something else we've <laughs> we see a lot of requests about is making your own feed how do you go about it and it's not really as hard as you may think so um Whoever. Jeff was kind of quiet tonight, but we're, he's going to get a serious workout uh, on the uh, on our next live event. I notice he's going to call in sick for that one. No, we'll hunt him down. <laughs> not a chance. If I'm not dead or in the hospital, I ain't going to miss that for nothing. Are you kidding? <laughs> whoever's whoever's a mixer that is needs to do some dusting. That's terrible. Why? It's just going to get dusty again. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> so, all that's right. Not, that's not dust. That's fine. All right. What day of the I, I should put that back up. When is that again? That's May 17th. 17th. Okay. 7 p.m. Eastern. So, oh, that's so right. People until next people. time, folks, thank you for joining us and participating and watching. And you guys keep enjoying your birds. Bye bye. We hope you've enjoyed this presentation by Poultry Keepers 360. All rights are reserved. 
This production has been made possible in part through the generous support of the Fur Trail Company, manufacturers of gardening and livestock products that are better naturally.